In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the prayer of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. 
Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises. Alarm the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen to Galilee. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas 
was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the eighth day of the octave of Easter. It's a long tradition in the church to celebrate an octave of days after the uh, feast day. We, of course, still do it at Christmas time. Uh, we begin on December 25th and we end on January 1st. Um, and likewise, we, the church used to celebrate an octave of Pentecost. And part of the idea of that is, is that the eighth day, the one day after a week of celebration, is meant to convey, I think, something of the, well, the eternal, the eternity, uh, the eternal, um, to give some sense that, um, of the day that goes beyond the normal measurement of time. However, I can't help wondering if we also don't celebrate that sense of uh, uh, that octave because of the sense that we have of the, uh, from this gospel today on this Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, uh, the first part of the gospel refers to that first day of the week, that first Easter Sunday when the disciples were huddled in the upper room and we're fearful of the authorities and we're in mourning for the loss of Jesus and when he, and he appeared to them. And of course we're told that Thomas wasn't there. And then the rest of the gospel was a week later on this day, the eighth day, when once again he appeared to them, though they were behind locked doors, and he presented himself to Thomas and invited him to place his fingers in the nail marks in his hands and his hand into the side where the spear had pierced him. Eight days. We celebrate it as one long day, a day, the day of eternity. Of course, the gospel is, I think, quite poignant for us uh, today, don't you? I mean, we begin with that meditation of the disciples, in essence, quarantined behind locked doors, um, separated from anyone else, and, and they're fearful, and it describes many of the conditions that I think we find ourselves in today. Um, and for many of our brothers and sisters who have lost a loved one, it also describes that other um, that other uh, uh, moment, uh, what they, that other suffering that they endured, which of course was mourning, sadness, grief. Uh, we do have a number in our parish who have lost loved, one, loved ones, and we remember them especially in this celebration of the Mass. And it was the grief that they suffered and the fear that they knew that probably in one way kept them from celebrating well as well as they could. Probably, I'm gathering, took them a little time to grasp the reality that was before them. Jesus, who had died so terribly on the cross, so definitively on the cross, the Romans were very good at doing that was now fully alive and more than alive. He was glorified 
they look different and their, well, uneasiness must have taken some time for them to experience fully the joy that we would think that they would have at seeing someone we love who's passed on again. It's that sense of fear and mourning and that uh, is not so much a, I guess you could say, a, um, a factor in our lives normally, except for this time when we're all kind of handling this, managing this pandemic. Normally the problem for us is uh, a bit of, uh, well, I guess you could say we're, we're, we're often too busy to give some real thought to welcoming the Lord and, and the sense of our meeting him again is something that we reserve to uh, the hereafter, um, uh, to that forever land that uh, seems like a never, never land, at, at least at this point. Um, but the reality, of course, is that each and every time we come and celebrate this holy sacrifice of the Mass, um, we find ourselves in his presence. And unlike the disciples who had only their, their fear and their grief, uh, we've had years of preparation of um, catechism and Catholic school and CCD and uh, reading and praying to help us to be ready to encounter him at any time and know the joy of the resurrection. And that's why it's one of those amazing, amazing kinds of, of facts in our present day life that I learned from reading um, Sherry Waddell's book, Forming Intentional Disciples, that unbelievably 70% of Catholics don't believe a personal relationship with Jesus is possible. They don't believe a personal relationship with God is possible. And that just doesn't make sense. That's paradoxical because we who believe that Jesus makes himself present in the Blessed Sacrament, who gives himself to us from his Father's presence in heaven through the power of the Holy Spirit, makes himself truly present to us such that we enter into an amazing and extraordinary and unbelievable communion with him. A communion that's closer than the communion between a a mother and a child, or a father and a, a, a husband and a wife, or, or, or best of friends. It's a communion that by which we are like St. Thomas, who doubted, invited to kind of encounter him in his reality, in his presence, his risen person, and to respond as he did in awe, my Lord and my God. And of course, especially at this time, I think that God reaches out to us. You know, it's the one thing we have uh, in common, I think, with the disciples as they gathered in the upper room, that for a moment they were without Jesus. And for this moment, we are, well, you are without Jesus. Um, at least without Jesus present in the sacrament. And yet, as I said, he reaches out to us in a special way in those most difficult moments. And he invites us to encounter him in other ways because of the sacraments we celebrate. You know, when we celebrate a funeral mass for someone, one of the marks of that person's life that we, we mention in the prayer of the faithful is that they receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were baptized with him, that they were anointed with the Holy Spirit. And that suggests that this communion lives on. And so perhaps, just perhaps, it's a great opportunity. It's an invitation to the Lord, even better, uh, to deepen that relationship with him through prayer, through uh, simple prayer, 
And by prayer, I mean actually the same kind of converse and the same kind of relationship we have with our loved ones, we have with our friends, uh, to make that conversation simple. Because that's really where our Holy Communion should lead us to, that kind of familiarity with, with, with Jesus, that kind of uh, awesome sense of, of what it was that happened so many years ago and still is present to us today in the sacrifice of the Mass wherever it's celebrated all over the world, whether it's here at St. Thomas Church in the parish of St. Mary and Cope and including St. Joseph or or whether it's at St. Patrick's Cathedral or at St. Peter's in Rome or at um, Father John's home parish in Sinyani in Ghana, it's uh, the, the sacrament is, is makes himself, Jesus by the sacrament, Jesus makes himself present to all of us. What's that prayer that we pray at the end of, um, of uh, adoration? and benediction when we mention that Jesus is present in all the tabernacles of the world. It was those tabernacles that many who were persecuted for the faith would unite themselves when they couldn't have ready access to it. And it's for that reason, of course, that uh, while we are without Jesus in Holy Communion for the moment, um, we're invited to do what? to have him enter within our hearts and next to our souls and to, so that we can pray to him, we can encounter him, we can know him, we can experience him, we can feel his love and his mercy. Deacon John pointed out uh, to me uh, the wonderful, wonderful collect, the opening prayer of the Mass It reminded us that we have received grace that God has bestowed upon us, a grace that enables us to grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. That's Jesus, Jesus who is present here momentarily, Jesus who will be present to you as you make that sacramental communion as you ask the Lord to be with you in your hearts, in your, next to your souls. Um, that is the very same Jesus that Thomas and all the disciples knew on that very first night and the end of that octave of that first Easter. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We ask God, confident in our prayer, to show his divine mercy through our prayers. For all leaders in the church and in government, here in our country and around the world, that they may be given divine guidance in all their responsibilities, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and dying, for nurses, doctors, hospital and nursing home staff, first responders and all essential workers, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our sisters and brothers in the parish who were sickened and recovering, who have lost family and friends, who have lost their jobs and livelihood because of the pandemic, for those whose want has become worse in this pandemic, for those who live in fear and loneliness, and for those who have asked our prayers, Janine Burrich, Elijah Colon, Ron Hall, and Christopher Verde. And may I recommend to you, especially a little girl in our parish who is undergoing treatments for a serious illness. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer that medical researchers and scientists will find cures and therapies to lessen the danger of this pandemic and others. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, including Louis and Elvira Ferrer, Al and Rita Schildwalker, Carlos Rodriguez, Teresa Rose Delis, Chun Weeks, and all those who are not known to us, that Jesus, the bread of life, may raise up on the last day all who shared in the table of his word and body. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Divine and merciful God, may the present trials by which we share in Christ's suffering not catch us off guard, but bring us rejoicing once again to this holy altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And usually at this time, we take up a collection. My finance committee chairman and my parish council president both asked me to mention that there are still ways to give the pe to the parish. We have kept our staff uh, on pay, including Vincent. Um, we've, uh, uh, we're paying our bills. Um, and we're hopeful that uh, you'll continue to remember us either by uh, registering to uh, give online through the parish website or uh, by sending your envelopes in the mail to us or dropping this, them off here in the church. However you can continue to help, we'd be most grateful.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at my hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain, attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis un geli et terra gloria tua, Osana in excelsis, Benedit. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, all your servants, especially those for whom we now pray. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Martha, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. 
and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, C. Prime, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended in your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Mortem tuam annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectionem convitemur, donem. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing.
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us mark with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. And please now let us remember all of our beloved deceased. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share, and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints, admit us, we beseech you, into your company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. On you stay, we tollies make on Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before the final blessing, may I again just assure you 
of our prayers, our thoughts for you, our, you were deeply missed uh, by me and Father Bob and Father John and Deacon John, Deacon Tony, Deacon Len, and Deacon Joe and all the staff. Um, we pray for the time when we'll gather together again and uh, here at the altar of praise um, and join our, our voices and, uh, in one song. Uh, until that time, uh, may we, through this communion in Christ, uh, continue to support and strengthen one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.